Hey, it's working. It's a squishy bellows. Oh man, guys. Geometry nodes are just crazy. What is going on? That is mental. Okay, everyone. In today's episode, we're going to have a look at 3D printed bellows. So, I'm going to show you the process that I am going through to try and improve this version. So, this version was designed conventionally in Fusion 360. Uh, but I'm not very happy with it because I don't like the way that it compresses. Do you see how it buckles like that? That's a real problem, makes lots of noise. Hopefully you can hear that. We're over here in Blender and I'm going to show you a little geometry nodes thing that I set up. The first thing that you will see here is that I just have a mesh open in the editor and it just has a few points and I have enabled the symmetry on the top there. If I grab stuff, it uh, is symmetrical. So I've just manually drawn this. And then what we can do is turn on the subdivision modifier and you can see how it gets nice and smooth. Um, and then uh, all of this sort of comes into play. So I'll switch on geometry nodes and zoom out. And there we go, right, we have a bellows. So what's going on here? Well. Basically, we're taking that original little curve that we were looking at and we're sweeping it along a circle curve to sort of create a single one of these little bulges here at the bottom. And then we're just repeating that bulge four times and then we're just putting a top and a bottom cap onto it. And to stitch all of those pieces together, uh, there is merge by distance, which is magical. So that lets us create this thing which is seamless and all the vertices come together. It's very, very, very nice. Hmm, something's gone wrong. Let's have a look here. So without the cloth modifier, it's just these top vertices which are bound onto that bone. Well, let's have a look at the settings for the cloth modifier. So we're doing 30 quality steps, speed multiplier 10, 0.1 kilogram vertex mass. I found that setting that low really makes everything unstable. Shape. Right, so the pin group is the caps. We want the simulation to follow the movement of the caps. Ah, there we go, we got it working. The uh, simulation is incredibly sensitive and it, it loves to just get frozen. All right, there we go. We get this nice little animation here. How good is that? So to fix the fact that we're only compressing the top one and it seems to be sort of lagging behind, we can increase the speed of the uh, simulation so let's do that hey there we go so that looks pretty good and that kind of gives us an idea of how things are going to crinkle on the inside uh, i'll kind of step through this manually but what we're looking to see is the sort of compression that we're experiencing on this inner ring here you see these little crinkles here uh, it would be really nice to find a way to um, control those and make them appear in places where I intend for them to appear. Uh, so as you can see, this profile is performing actually quite reasonably well. And this is indeed the best profile that I've found so far, which is basically as close as possible to uh, a heap of semicircles going downwards. So here's an example of one that's actually working really, really well. You can see it's very quiet. There's no sort of crinkling sounds due to those instabilities. It doesn't have much range of motion, which is something I would like to fix because once these are all sort of touching, it becomes really stiff and you can't compress it any further. You can't stretch it either. It's, it's quite tight to stretch. So one thing I think would improve the bellows potentially is to have sort of vertical pleats along these bulges mucking around with python and numpy and i've designed this formula where we can vary the sort of depth and tightness of these puzzle piece edges uh, and you can see here i'm kind of sweeping how extreme that uh, puzzle piece shape is and it, it's interpolating between an ordinary circle and a puzzle piece edge circle and the idea is to sort of add this onto the geometry of the bellows. Going back over to Blender, I have achieved at least that part. So if we have a look in here, this is my custom node over here. 
just calculates a bunch of angles and stuff and outputs this shape. Uh, the trouble is, I'm not sure how I'm going to take a, a bunch of these profiles and convert them into a bellows shape because there's no loft tool in the Blender node tools. Because of the way I'm generating it, it just was not working. I was basically trying to do a curve which goes from the base to the top. I can kind of show you here. So this is like the base curve and then we resample that curve at various points along and these instances which are placed along that curve and I just could not vary the properties of this um, this group node so I had to abandon that approach and we got a new approach and here it is here with fancy colors and everything now I'll explain the colors in a second let's just have a look at the nodes so this is actually a simpler uh, way of doing it and we're doing much the same sort of thing uh, except at the beginning we're generating a cylinder and then what we're doing is sampling the position of all the vertices on that cylinder and sort of recalculating where they are so we, we use the x, x and y position here to calculate the angle around the cylinder and then z is obviously the up and downy bit and then we just modify the position of that um, vertex and that way you start with a, a cylinder which is already a stitched together mesh and you don't have to worry about stitching together those various instances that you had previously. Uh, so that's basically what this does, just mostly math. Uh, here's that thing that calculates the incrumpulated shape um, and then it sets the position of the cylinder's coordinates and we set the material and this is the output we get. So we can vary this a little bit. If I go yeah, currently we still got to modify them in here. So we can turn up the number of crimples to 10 or maybe eight. There we go. So we got lots of crimples. I want to explain the shader because the shader is really exciting. You know, when you have an object and it's a complicated curvy shape and you want to know if you can 3D print it. Well, the only thing that really matters is that this overhang angle here when the print head is trying to print that, if that angle is greater than 55, 60 degrees, uh, it's just not going to print. And especially in vase mode, which is how we're going to print this, it just won't work. So I created this material, uh, which sort of shows the slope. And if the slope goes over a certain threshold, we'll see little red areas. And I've currently got the threshold set over here to 55 degrees. So let's tinker around with that. So if we go to zero, we'll get deeper folds and there we are. So we're starting to see areas where the 3D printer would just not print our spiral vase. So this is an unprintable object, sadly. So what my hope is, is that by controlling the location and the magnitude of these ripples, we can control uh, the collapse of the cylinder and where the stiffness is. So I, I think these little folds here will behave as like a stiffener in that area to some extent, uh, but also because they're kind of zigzagged back, they should still be compliant. So it'll be like soft, but still keep the entire thing functional. Oh man, this is a whole new kind of awesome for me. I've never written a formula that generates something that I've 3D printed. That's brilliant. So to end off this video, I just wanted to sort of show off some of these and how they printed. So this one we saw before didn't print very well, but that's kind of the exception. Generally, they've printed extremely well. They're really tough and you can get a really good overhang because it's a completely circular profile. So this is one of the earliest examples that was working well, which sort of led to probably still the best bellows profile I've discovered to date is this one here with the nearly semicircles and the very tight radius on the inside. This compresses really nicely and there's very little effort required to compress it. It's very, very stable. This was my first attempt. So, you know, logically you'd use flat surfaces, right? But it turns out that that is absolutely awful. It's kind of like the plastic bendy straws of uh, once upon a time, which we don't I don't even think you can get them anymore. This one just 
didn't work at all, way too stiff. This one here is one of the new ones that I showed the design for in Blender with geometry nodes. So this one is actually quite promising. Because I've printed it in miniature form, it's hard to estimate what it would be like if it were printed bigger. Uh, but this, this is pretty good. Here's another one that I've printed miniature, which turned out okay. This one is very stiff. So it, it has this sort of reversed pleated design. So it's, it's very, very stiff, but it does compress incredibly evenly, which makes me think that if it were larger, it might do better. But I have run out of this pink filament, so I can't keep going with these experiments. Here's a large version of the best profile I have so far. And I found it's even improved by putting an elastic band here. This is without an elastic band. Here's with one elastic band. And here's with two elastic bands. Look at that. That's so much better. I think the elastic band won't last forever, but like a rigid piece of wire or something like a ring that went there would be ideal. And and this is what it's for. So um, I'll just fill the reservoir. There we go. And I can push this button. And that can refill the reservoir. When I get a chance, I'll install a valve on the top. This one's, uh, this one's too small, uh, but the valve uh, if that's what the valve looks like. It's actually surprisingly effective. So it's it's printed this way up like that. And because this is like mirror smooth, it actually gets a remarkably good seal. There's no reservoir at the moment, but we can do this.